uh, this, and I believe she was realized last week, um, the Moore family want to keep them in, my, in, in mind and keep them in our prayers as well. You and I, let's pray for one another as well. Let us pray now. This morning, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come at this precious hour of the morning to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for another day's journey. Lord, we thank you for being so good, so kind, so merciful to us. And Lord, we realize that we can't even walk without your hold in our hand. Lord, we need you this morning. Father, help us to realize that it's important that we are all saved. Lord, I ask that you would use me now as I stand behind this sacred desk. As I open my mouth, speak through me, Lord. Let your word fall on good soil that somebody here might come crying, saying, what is it that I must do to be saved? We ask it all in Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen? Amen. amen and amen. Wake up and get saved. You, you do know that if you are asleep and your house catches on fire, the only way you can get saved is to wake up. You, you do know that if you're very tired and you fall asleep while driving behind the steering wheel, the only way that you can save yourself from a fatal accident is to wake up. You, you, you do know that if you're having a, a bad dream or a nightmare and, and someone is about to kill you in the dream, the only way that you can be saved and not killed even in the dream is to wake up. Hmm. You need to snap out of it and wake up, church. Some babies, some adults die in their sleep. But the point that I'm trying to make here is before any of these type of deaths happen to you, you need to wake up and be saved. Did you know that, that you can be wide awake and still spiritually asleep? It's time for the church to wake up and be saved. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, I, I think I ought to tell you that, that, that I don't want anybody to be offended by the message today, but I have to tell you that if it applies to you, you just need to wake up so that you can be saved. There is a reason God is sending this message out today because somebody here needs to wake up so that they can be saved. Yeah, I'm sent by God this morning to help somebody. I, I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you know if you're still asleep and you need to wake up. I know the Lord is, is all right. Some of you are, are, are still just sitting there on the side of the bed. You, you got up all right, but, 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 but you're just sitting on the side of the bed. You're still asleep. <laughs> yeah, you're not moving in the right direction. you still asleep with your eyes wide open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some of you are sleepwalking. <laughs> you're just going through the motion. <laughs> I know the Lord is, is all right. Listen, as we get ready to, to unpack this lesson for the morning, Luke has been credited to be the author of the book of Acts. Luke has, has, has been given the credit, and, and, and the fact of the matter is that in this lesson today, Luke was actually involved. He was actually there firsthand. We're about to find out in our lesson this morning that God will shake this world up if he has to. If he has to shake the world up, he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, he, he did it in our text, and he's doing it right now in this day and time with this pandemic that we're going through. God is shaking the world up. Amen. And listen, and listen, I don't care who you are, you cannot continue to ignore the power of God. Amen. You just can't continue to ignore his power. God will make you realize that you need to wake up so that you can be saved. God is real. He's almighty. And, and, and if you don't believe it, I just wish you could talk with, with, with Pharaoh. Pharaoh will tell you that he found out God is real. I wish you could talk to King Nebuchadnezzar. He will tell you that God is real. In our text this morning, yeah, yeah, in our text this 
morning. I, I, I do realize that, that, that most preachers concentrate on Paul and Silas getting free from prison. I realize that. When you hear this text, I realize that that's what most pre preachers focus on. Usually, preachers talk about the midnight hour when Paul and Silas prayed and sung and how God sent the earthquake to free them. I know that's what, what you used to used to hearing when you hear this text here. Well, this morning, this morning I want to I wanna open your eyes to something a little bit deeper this morning. The fact of the matter is that, yes, God took the handcuffs and the shackles off of Paul and Silas. Yes, he did. To free them so that they could do his will. They had to be able to praise God freely. <laughs> They had to be able to baptize a whole family that we're going to talk about here in a minute. They had to show the prisoners who this man Jesus Christ was and just how powerful Jesus was. <laughs> After all, when, when, when the earthquake came and, 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 and the shackles came off of Paul and Silas, you do know that the, the shackles also came off of all the prisoners at the same time. Yeah, if you look at verse number 26, it'll, it'll tell you, it'll tell you, it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open. And listen, everyone's bands were loose. Not just Paul and Silas, but all of them. Everybody that was in prison, they, they were free. <laughs> Good God Almighty. So, so, so God was doing some things here in our lesson today. Listen, listen, I, I, think I, ought to, I think I ought to tell you that, that, that if you already know the story, there's some things in here today that God is going to open your eyes to that you did not see. Yeah, you, you do remember how, how it all took place, how Paul had, had, had a vision. There was a man standing in front of him. Uh, saying, come over and help us from Macedonia. Come over and help us out. We need you, Paul. And Paul obeyed the vision because Paul believed that it was God telling him to go and share the word. So Paul did that. He, he did what, what the Spirit told him to do. And, and, and as we fast forward a little bit, when Paul got there, he, he met a lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the name of Lydia. And, 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 and how he met her was Paul had church by the riverside. And, and, and that's where he met this lady by the name of Lydia, who was a seller of purple. Now, now, as we fast forward a little bit more, because this is not where the focus at today. I just want to get to where we're going this morning. Paul, yeah, Paul realized that while he was praising God, while he was telling folks about Jesus Christ, Satan didn't like it. And I got to tell you this morning that when you're praising God, when you're trying to tell the world about Jesus, Satan don't like it. Yeah, so, so Satan recognized God's men. Yeah, so he sent this damsel, this young lady, who was possessed with the spirit of divination, uh, which means she had some special powers. She was a fortune teller. She was doing things to, to help the big shots in town. But this is what Satan used her to do at this time. <laughs> yeah, he tried, to, he tried to cause a lot of confusion. Yeah, Satan tried all he could to get Paul and Silas to stop talking about Jesus Christ. And he tried to shut their mouth. But we got to learn to do like Paul and Silas did. We got to learn how to rebuke Satan. When he comes upon us and he wants us to shut our mouth, when we're trying to give a testimony about Jesus and somebody says, don't take all of that, we need to rebuke them and tell them, maybe it don't take all that for you, but it take all that and more for me. Good God Almighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this lady here that was possessed began to follow Paul and Silas all around, and she began to say, these men, these men are servants of the Most High God which show us the way to salvation. Now that sounds good. That sounds good, and that's true. They were men of the Most High God, and they were trying to show people the way to salvation. But Satan tried to turn around and make it look like it was something bad. That's what Satan does to us, y'all. If you don't watch Satan, he tries to make our worship seem like it's something bad instead of something good. Yes, Lord. Good God Almighty. Don't you know that Satan right now is trying to
to get in some of you that come out to church every Sunday morning while we're having parking lot service. Satan is trying to tell y'all that y'all don't need to be out there. Yes, yes. I know he is. Uh, I know he is. That's what Satan does. He tries to make our work for God seem like it's counterfeit and we know it's real. Mm -hmm. so, so church, don't let Satan turn you around. Keep on coming out to the house of prayer yes. every Sunday morning yes. and be a witness to God's word. Good God Almighty. That's why Paul got so angry with, the, with this little girl because of the spirit that was inside of her. And notice that when Paul spoke, he didn't speak to the girl. The Bible said he spoke to the spirit that was inside of her and he commanded in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And the Bible said it came out that same hour. I know God is powerful. This was Paul's second missionary journey at this time. Paul when Paul started this journey, he had no idea that he would be treated so badly just for doing God's will. Yeah, this, this was dealing with the church at, uh, in Philippi. This was the first church in Europe that Paul had, had established here, and it was the Philippians church. And, 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 and I think I want to tell you that the Philippians, Paul found so much favor with them. Out of all the churches, he loved them a little bit more because they were right there for him. Every time he got in a financial strain, the Philippians came through for him. So he loved the Philippians church. So listen, listen, I'm putting you on notice, church, that, that just like Paul and Silas had to suffer, if you're going to reign with Christ, you're going to have to suffer with him. Paul didn't know he was going to have to suffer like that, but, 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 but when God first called Paul, God said that he was going to suffer. Good God Almighty. You do see what they did to Paul and Silas. They caught them and, and, they, and, and they got upset because what they had done, they had cut their money flow off. So they caught them and they drug them to the marketplace where the rulers were. And I want to tell you, church, God was watching just how they treated his servants. And, and I think I ought to tell you that God is watching how people are treating you. Children of God, he's watching how they're treating you right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I got good news for you. You don't have to fight your own battle. God will get your revenge. God will get your revenge. Yeah, you just turn it over to the Lord and watch him work it out. Yeah, they, they, tore, they tore off Paul and Silas' clothes. They beat them so bad that their backs were lacerated, bloody, a swollen mass of human flesh on their back. They beat them boy like they stole something. And all they were doing was telling them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then they threw them in a prison. They were sitting in the dark, a smelly place, a nasty place, roach and rat infested, a dungeon. They, they put them in a place that kind of remind me of how they did Jesus, huh? Yeah, 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 they hung Jesus in between two criminals, in between two thieves, like he had stole something. And all Jesus was doing was coming to say the word. Yes, yes. That's how folks will treat you. When you're trying to do the master's will, folks will treat you like you ain't nothing. Yes, but you got to realize who you are and whose you are. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah. See, these boys, Paul and Silas, they didn't let that get, get them down, church. And whatever you're going through, I stopped by this morning to tell you, don't let it get you down. Be a brave soldier for the Lord. Yeah, so they started their worship service at midnight. <laughs> yeah, when Paul and Silas, when they, when they were in jail, they, they started their worship service at midnight. They, 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 didn't, they didn't do it early in the day. They didn't do it early in the evening. But the Bible said at midnight <laughs> was when they started it. Well, I, I wonder why did they start it? And, and, and God revealed something to me uh, that King David talked about in the book of Psalms 119 and 62. And Paul and Silas had already got familiar with what David had did and what David said. If you look at that, that scripture, Psalms 119, verse 62, it says, At midnight I will rise up to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. So Paul waited till midnight to rise up and give God thanks because he knew God was a righteous judge and he knew God was going to show up on time. 
Ain't the Lord all right? Yes, Lord. Saints, you must keep the faith even in the midst of a storm. Mm -hmm. I stop by to tell you to hold on and keep the faith in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Now, 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 let's look at verse 25 and 26. I, I want to show you something here. Verse 25. They, they, they prayed and they sung with such an anointing, yeah, with such power, and they were loud. <laughs> they weren't whispering their song. They didn't, they didn't sing under their breath. They didn't hum. They didn't moan. The Bible said they were loud with their praise. <laughs> Every now and then, I'm glad to be part of that noisy bunch. <laughs> that, that bunch that don't mind praising God in front of a crowd. That bunch that don't mind letting the world know what side I'm on. Yeah, yeah. Good God Almighty. <laughs> yeah, they were loud. They were not ashamed of their God. And most people, a lot of people, would have been ashamed <laughs> to praise God when, when he allowed somebody to beat you down like that. When he allowed somebody to come in and repossess your God. When he allowed somebody to take But these boys got loud. They praised God. And church, this is a teaching moment for me. I want to teach you something here. No matter how sick you are, no matter how broke you are, no matter how life has beaten you down, you still need to praise God like he already has delivered you. Yes, yes. You need to praise him just like he already delivered you. Yes. No matter what you're going through, yes, you need to praise him because you ought to know the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Yes, Lord. Wake up and get saved. Now, now, still, still, when you look at that verse 25, they were so loud that the prisoners heard them. Yeah, yeah, they were so loud. The Bible said the prisoners heard them. That's good. That's good the prisoners heard them. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but the prisoners was not the only one that God wanted to hear them praising his name. <laughs> yeah, God had a whole nother plan. He had, he had a whole nother plan. It was good that the prisoners heard it. That's fine. But God wasn't through with that. Listen, listen, I, I want to tell you something, church. When others are being blessed, and the prisoners was blessed because they woke up and heard the word, but I want to tell you, when others are being blessed, God wants to bless you too. <laughs> yeah. God wanted to save everybody in that prison that night. He was on, God was on a mission, and his mission was to save everybody in that prison that night. The Holy Spirit was moving that night. It was going from heart to heart and from breath to breath. The Holy Spirit was moving. But listen, since the singing and since the praying didn't wake the sinner man up, who was the prison God, since that didn't wake him up, God said, I know how to wake him up. I'm going to send an earthquake. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is, church. Here's the key point for the day. God did not send an earthquake to free Paul and Silas because God already knew that the next day Paul and Silas were going to get freed anyway because they locked them up and they didn't have a good cause. They didn't even go through a trial. They knew they were going to have to release them the next day. So God already knew Paul and Silas were going to walk out free. So he didn't send the earthquake to free Paul and Silas. He sent the earthquake to save the jailer and his family. Yes, Lord. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. That's what woke him up. That's what woke him up. God sent the earthquake to wake him up. The singing and the praying didn't wake him up. But when the earthquake came, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. Verse 27 says, And the keeper of the prisoner, waking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fleed. He woke up when the earthquake came. And then when he woke up, he saw all the praising going on. He saw the praising God. He saw what was going on. He, he woke up. God made sure that this jailer, this prison guard, saw his mighty acts. Yeah, he wanted to save not only the prison God, but he wanted to save that man's whole family. And some of you right now, God not only wants to save you, but he wants to save your whole family. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Church, we're living in a time where God is moving very powerfully. God is moving in a 
mighty way. And there's no limit to what God can do, and there's no limit to what God will do when it comes to getting his children saved. Yes, Lord. Yeah, in our lesson, God moved through an earthquake to wake somebody so that they could get saved. And the same God that moved through the earthquake, he will move in your life so that you can be saved. Now, 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 it's not his will that anybody should perish. That's why God will move in a mighty way. If it takes that to save your soul, God will move. God moves in different ways to wake up his people. Well, name a few ways that God moves. He moves through nature, through tornadoes, through earthquakes, through floods. And you notice that there are so many people that have given their life to Christ because after the flood came, after the tornado came, and they were still standing, they realized that didn't nobody save them but the Lord. So God moves in different ways. He moves through tragedies in our lives. Yeah, certain things have to happen sometimes for people to turn their life over to Christ and be saved. You do remember what Isaiah said. He said that it was in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Somebody had to die for Isaiah to see the Lord. So he moves through the preaching of the gospel. Yeah, just the power of the gospel will move on people's heart and they will give their life to Christ sometime. God moves through the scriptures. Sometimes you can be at home by yourself reading the scripture and God will make the word come alive and you will repent and give your life to Christ. He moves through events in people's lives, causing them to think about life and death situations, causing them to think about, hey, I got to realize I got to spend eternity somewhere and God will move upon the altar of your heart. Whatever it takes to wake you up, you can be assured so that you can be assured of seating God's kingdom. Whatever it takes for God to wake you up, he'll do it to save his children. Yes, Lord. Yeah. It took an earthquake for the jailer to wake up. I just wonder, church, what it's going to take to wake some of you up. My Lord, my Lord. Good God Almighty. My Lord. The point that I'm making is God allows things to happen in your life to prepare you, prepare your soul for salvation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people look at things as being bad, but God allowed bad things to happen so that he can prepare your soul for salvation. So, so don't get caught up in your situation. That's natural stuff. You need to focus on spiritual stuff. You need to see what God is really up to. He's in, in everything he does is for our own good, yeah, church. Right. Everything God does is for our good. Yeah. So I, I need to be clear about something. Let me be clear this morning. God sent his only son to die because this world, this world here, was not going to be our home. Mm -hmm. And God wanted us to be in heaven with him forevermore. That's why he sent Jesus, so that Jesus could be the bridge that takes us over to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord. So church, uh, listen, we live in this life <laughs> on earth for one reason, to glorify and magnify God. But the main reason we're living this life so we can live again. Yes, Lord. And we can live again uh -huh. eternally, not temporary, but eternally with the Lord. If you look at verse number 27, the jailer felt like he faced a hopeless situation. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes in your life, you're going to feel like you're facing a hopeless situation. Now, I told you at the beginning, this, this sermon today is not about Paul and Silas getting free. No, this is about the jailer that God came in and, and saved him and his whole family. So, so there was a whole other purpose for the earthquake. So, so I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make my point here. Church, we should be like the jailer. When God moved in his life, the first thing he did was he cried out for salvation. Yeah, he cried out for salvation. This is what he did, church. In, in, in the, in verse 27 says, he, 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 the keeper and the keeper of the prison working out of his sleep. 
Seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fleed. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Uh -huh. So this, this, this God felt like the earthquake had caused him some problems. At first, he felt hopeless. He, he, he felt like the earthquake sprung the jail doors open and allowed the prisoners to escape. That's what he thought. And then he felt like since he had fallen asleep on duty, he was in a hopeless case. And then he knew that the penalty for allowing prisoners to escape was death. Oh, if you let the prisoner escape, you're going to die, buddy. And that's what he knew. So, 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 so why did the jailer draw his sword to kill himself? He knew huh, the terrible shame and the punishment that awaited him. And he knew the shame that would be upon his own family once they found out that he went to sleep and let the prisoners escape. So he didn't want to embarrass his family, and he didn't want, he didn't want to have to face that, that punishment. So he felt like that if I commit suicide, if I kill myself, and the word gets out to my family, they would think that when the prisoners escaped, that one of the prisoners killed me. So he was going to take his own life. Yeah. Now, now this is where I need to see if I can help somebody. Church, can I let you in on something? I want to let you in on something. Circumstances may be different for everybody. Your circumstance may be different from everybody, but everybody experiences serious problems in life that causes fear, helplessness, hopelessness and insecurity in life. Everybody, everybody experiences those things in life. Your circumstance may be different, but everybody gonna experience these serious problems. Everybody gonna experience some fear. Everybody gonna experience being helpless or hopeless. Now, this is what I need to tell you. When life happens, you either gonna turn to God and get close to him like Paul and Silas did, or when life happens to you, you're going to drift farther away from God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, one of the two going to happen. And church, I'm asking you, please don't let my preacher be in vain. When I tell you to turn it over to the Lord, remember the pastor said, no matter what I'm going through, if I give it to the Lord, he will work it out. Yes, yes. This is my point. Helplessness and hopelessness are used by God to prepare the human soul for salvation. We have to turn it all over to the Lord, especially when you face with impossible situations. The choice is up to you. Mom and Daddy can't make us choose Christ. We have to choose him for ourselves. Yes. We have to decide to make Jesus our choice. And listen, I don't want to host no pity party for nobody. And I don't want to host no pity party for myself when I'm going through because I, I, I got a made up mind that as long as breath is running in my body, as long as I'm able and I'm closing my right mind, I don't care what time of the night you wake me up, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. I'm going to be faithful unto death. I don't want no pity party. God is able. He's the keeper of my soul. Now, as I head toward a close this morning, I want you to look at how God was working in the jailer's life. Uh, listen, believers, as believers, church, we must be ready to offer hope to the downtrodden Christian because there are some Christians who are downtrodden. There are some Christians who feel like giving up. So as believers, as strong believers, we have to be ready to offer them hope just like Paul offered this prison guard some hope. Yeah. Paul cried out with a loud voice, do thyself no harm. We are all here. Paul said, every single prisoner is right here. You don't have to kill yourself. In my, with my spiritual ear, I can hear Paul looking at the prisoner saying, prisoners, are you with me? And the prisoner saying, oh yeah, we have a church. We ain't going nowhere. It's something to have church. When you have a church, you ain't in no hurry to go nowhere. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God Almighty. <laughs> yeah. All the prisoners that came inside of Paul and Silas' cell. That's why the guard thought that they had escaped. He looked in their cells, he didn't see nobody. He thought that they were all gone. He was gonna kill himself. Paul said, hold on. Do yourself no harm, we're all here. They're in here. Yeah, the jailer was standing in the hallway where the light was on 
him. And Paul then was in the cell where he couldn't see them in the cell. So Paul had to yell out and tell them, we'll all him. There was a hopeless man. The jailer was a hopeless man that now had hope. He was now ready for salvation. And I want to quickly tell you what this jailer did. He called for a light. <laughs> yeah, that's in verse number 29. He, he called for a light. <laughs> And you know that light represents Jesus, who is the light of the world. And then he said he sprung in, which means he wasted no time seeking salvation. Yeah, the day you hear my voice, the Lord said, heart not your heart. And then the third thing he did, he came trembling, showing humility. He humbled himself down. And then the last thing the Bible said, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Uh, he fell down before men who could point him to the cross. Yeah. The jailer realized that this God of Paul and Silas had just caused an earthquake. In the, and not only had he caused an earthquake, but this God of Paul and Silas had saved his life from being executed. <laughs> the jailer had heard that Paul and Silas had been preaching, <laughs> had been teaching salvation throughout the city. And, and, and they had been preaching that people could be forgiven of their sins and be delivered from sin and death. <laughs> That's the good news that them boys were preaching out there. And after seeing the power of God, this jailer wanted a God, like Paul and Silas God. He wanted a God that would be on his side. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder who wouldn't serve a God like that, a God that will come and see about you when you get in trouble. This jailer wanted a God like that on his side. So the jailer looked at Paul and Silas. I wish y'all had been there. And he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He said, I know y'all saved, but tell me, what must I do to be saved? Yeah, yeah, the jailer warned a God that would care for him and protect him. Yeah, just like he did his followers. And church, that's why it's so important that you share your testimonies with the world. Yes. It's important that you tell the world every time God yes. brings you out of a situation, that you tell the world every time God heals your body, because the world is listening and trying to see how we react to what's going on. Uh -huh. Good God Almighty. You need to tell the world every time God makes a way out of no way. The world is watching us, yeah. And listen, if you don't tell the world that God is able, they will never ask you that question. What must I do to be saved? And, and I'm gonna tell you something, Christian. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna hit you hard right now. If ain't nobody never asks you what must I do to be saved, you ain't living the life in front of them. Yes, Lord. Oh, I went out on the limb, yes, man. Because I'm telling you, every one of us have been around sinner men, boy and girl, who didn't know the way to Christ, and they should look at the way we live it, and they should ask us, what must I do? To be saved. Yes, they may not ask it in those words, but they may ask you, tell me about the God that you serve. You look like you're a blessed man, woman, boy, or girl. That's their way of asking you, what, what must I do to get that same God on my side that you have? But you got to listen to what they're saying so that you can be ready to respond when they asked a question. Here's another teaching moment. I'm getting ready to let you go. Here's another teaching moment. Even though Paul and Silas were tired, they, they were wore out, they were up all night, their body was racking in pain, they still was ready to do God's will. Yeah, verse 32 said, said that, and they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Even though them boys were wore out, they were beat, they still was ready to speak the word of God to the lost sinner man. Yeah. When the jailer asked the question, what must I do to be saved? Immediately they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know what the beauty of this story is? The beauty of this story is it only takes one person in your home to save your whole house. Yes. It don't take but one. <laughs> It don't take but one, and it ought to be you. If your house is lost, you ought to be that one that finds the Lord, and when you find him, you ought to bring your whole family to Christ. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Verse 33, let us know something. Hmm. The jailer showed repentance by 
washing the wounds on Paul and Silas. This is his way of repenting. He realized he had done God wrong and he wanted to repent. He heard the word and now he's repenting. He's believing and he's about to get baptized. So the, the Bible said Paul and Silas, they baptized his whole family. And look, when they baptized the family, <laughs> yeah, the spirit of God was moving all in the house. <laughs> and uh, there was joy and rejoicing uh, throughout uh, the jailer's house. Uh, and the Lord all right. Uh, God had uh, saved him mm, and his whole family. <laughs> He saved them uh, from a burning hell. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, I can see uh, many uh, of God's children uh, ready, uh, ready to quit uh, and throw in the towel uh, because uh, you feel like uh, all uh, your hope is gone. Uh, you feel like uh, there is uh, no joy uh, in sorrow. Uh, you feel like uh, there is no hope uh, for your tomorrow. Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, well, the Lord sent me uh, to tell you uh, to hold on uh, a little while longer. Uh, one day after a while, uh, everything uh, uh, going to be all right. Uh, good morning, Riley. Uh, if you don't see me no more, uh, I stop by on my way to glory uh, just to tell you. You need to wake up uh, and be saved. Uh, somebody here uh, is dozing off uh, on the Lord. Uh, I got to tell you uh, to wake up uh, and get saved uh, to the ones of you uh, that started out with Jesus. Uh, but you allow Satan uh, to creep in your life. Uh, wake up uh, and get saved uh, while uh, you still have time. Uh, have I got a witness hand uh, to the ones? of you that have lost your joy, you need to wake up and be saved. Can I remind you that this joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you, and the world sure can't take it away. Have I got a witness this morning to the ones of you that are sick and feel like you can't get well? Can I remind you that Jesus is a doctor that never lost Ain't he all right? I'm talking about my way 
get saved. Wake up, children, and get saved. You dozing off on God. And I need you to wake up, church. I need you to wake up. Because the enemy is trying to tip in your life. Wake up and be saved. Yes, Lord. The Bible said that when the prison guard and his whole family got baptized, there was such a great rejoicing in the home. He didn't care what nobody thought. He didn't care what the boss man said no more. He didn't care what the neighbor said no more. He didn't care what the church folks said no more. All he knew was God had saved him and his family. It's time, church, for you to forget about what other folks saying and think about you. As long as you know that God is on your side, as long as I got King Jesus, I, that's all I need. He died. He died for us on that old rugged cross. Yeah, he hung there from the sixth to the main hour. Mm. And they put him in a bar of a tomb. He stayed there three days and three nights. But the Bible said it was early the third day morning that he got up with all power in his hands. Church, if you need him, all you got to do is call him. He's listening all night long, waiting for somebody to call his name. Yes, Lord. Wake up and be saved. May the God, may the Lord bless you. May God keep you. May his face forever shine upon you. We love you so much. God bless you. Good afternoon, my name is Tane Gaskin and today marks the kickoff of Black History Month at Randolph Chapel. We have special activities planned for each Sunday this month. On the first, third, and fourth Sundays, Radcliffe Chapel's youth and invited guest youth will be reciting inspirational quotes. We also have motivational speeches from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and former First Lady Michelle Obama. On the second Sunday, we will have our Black History Month program. Youth from Radcliffe Chapel, Youths from Prince of Peace Missionary Baptist Church in Flint, Michigan, and other youths from Flint and Grand Blanc, Michigan will be participating. The 2021 national theme for Black History Month is the Black Family, Representation, Identity, and Diversity. We've selected for topics, I'm Destined to Succeed and I'm Destined for Greatness. On today's program, we have Nathaniel Brown, Nicole Brown, Jordan Williams, Braden Gaddis, Layla Gaskin, Peyton Johnson, Zachary Harvey, and Zion White. And we'd like to give a special thanks to our pastor, Pastor Douglas Lacey Sr., to Pastor Jeffrey Hawkins of the Prince of Peace Missionary Baptist Church in Flint, Michigan, to our youth department workers, to our parents, to Dr. Brenda Brown, the author of the book, The Day I Forgot, but will always remember, to Joseph. Good afternoon, my name is Nathaniel Brown, and I am 18 years old. Welcome. This Black History Month, we will celebrate the lives and contributions of trailblazing African Americans, both past and present. Following our inspiring quotes from some of the many influential African American activists to motivate and remind us to be strong and never give up. Yes, we are destined to succeed. Yes, we are destined for greatness. Yes, we can. Hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Life's been huge, poet. Don't try to lessen yourself for the world. Let the world catch up to you. Beyonce, singer, songwriter. I'm the Knowledge is power. If you know when you came, there's really no limit to where you can go by James Baldwin. There is no such thing as failure. 
Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction by Oprah Winfrey. Don't let anything stop you. There will be times when you will be disappointed, but you can't let it stop you. Sadie T. Alexander, lawyer and activist. Hi, my name is Jordan Williams. If everything was perfect, you will never learn or grow. This is a quote by Beyonce, singer, songwriter, and actress. I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? This is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide, as the model for those who are to build the building. And a building is not well erected without a good, sound, and solid blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. And once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, that Doors are opening to each of you. Doors of opportunity are opening to each of you that were not open to your mothers and to your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to enter these doors as they open. And so I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school, and I understand all of the sociological reasons why we often drop out of school. But I urge you, in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation that you are forced to live so often with intolerable conditions, stay in school. And when you discover what you're going to be, in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Set out to do a good job and do that job so well that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. 
But be the best little scrub on the side of the real. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. And finally, in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Don't allow anybody to pull you so low as to make you hate them. Don't allow anybody to cause you to lose your self-respect to the point that you do not struggle for justice. However young you are, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody. And so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom and justice. Now in this struggle for freedom and justice, there are many constructive things that we all can do, and that we all must do. And so our slogan must not be, burn, baby, burn. It must be, build, baby, build. Organize, baby, organize. <laughs> yes, our slogan must be, Learn, baby, learn, so that we can earn, baby, earn. <laughs> and with a powerful commitment, I believe that we can transform dark yesterdays of injustice into bright tomorrows of justice and humanity. Let us keep going toward the goal of selfhood, toward the realization of the dream of brotherhood and toward the realization of the dream of understanding goodwill. Let nobody stop us, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving.